So I just uh, copied one of my layers from that previous piece and pasted it over here. I'm gonna make a duplicate of it so then I always have like my backup. So double clicking on this, retitling that original. I'm even gonna put a lock on it so it stays there. So we're gonna be working more with masks today, but we're also going to introduce some new adjustment layers and then also uh, layer properties and also layer opacity. And we're gonna find those in this area. But first things first, uh, I wanna start coloring this. I think I'm gonna start with something simple like his suit. So uh, I'm gonna just take my quick selection tool. I'm gonna to make sure that I'm on the right layer and I'm gonna select like his suit. Okay, and then uh, the nice thing of the quick selection tool, if I wanna take things away, I hold down Alt or Option on a Mac and I can get rid of places I went over on. I go inside of here, because I'll do a shirt and tie later. Okay. Let me know if, I, if I'm losing anyone or anything, because I can always explain this better. Will you have a video posted? Uh, yeah, I'll have a video as well. Okay, all right. Yep. All right, at least I try to have like videos of everything just in case, uh, you know, every little thing we do. And if I don't, there's you, that means it's pretty easy to find like the answers to. Okay, so this is sort of like uh, the part that we haven't done yet. I've made my selection, but now I need to make a new adjustment layer. And I'm gonna do that in my little layer panel. It's the black and white circle. I'm gonna click on that. And I'm gonna hang on this, uh, this area for a second so you can all see and write it down. Uh, in my adjustments layer drop down menu, uh, you know, we've used levels, color balance, all that stuff. What we're going to do with this is just use solid color. And this is going to give us like a base tone. So I'm going to click on solid color. And right now it's just like filling it in with opaque 100% like that color. Uh, I'm going to pick more of like a blue. I promise this will be fine in a second. I can change the color of it by double clicking on that color area. I can you know, swap it around. So that's another kind of non-destructive nice thing. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do, this is uh, really important. This is the different layer mode that you can be in. If I click on any of these layers, the default is it's just set to normal. Uh, now if you click the drop down arrow of your layer uh, properties, we have all these other options that we can do. And what these do basically is it just uh, takes whatever color that you have on top and then applies it to whatever is underneath and it like adds in all the tones that are under there. Like, so all the values of the jacket. So it makes it look realistic. Uh, it's just like taking a filter, like a color film filter or something over it. Um, what we usually use with this, uh, what a lot of like, you know, concept artists do this a lot. Uh, anyone that uses Photoshop multiply, we use a lot. Overlay we use a lot, and color. Probably more like overlay, color, and multiply are like the main ones. But uh, just like anything, you know, who knows? You might be working on a picture where hard light or soft light looks, you know, great. I think soft light actually looks good in this instance. So maybe I'll use that. Uh, the color is a little weird though. So I want to double click on that and I can adjust it and I can see it in real time like as it's changing. Uh, one thing I was telling the other class like you know it never fails every semester someone like turns in something like this and it's like 
you know, it's not very realistic looking at all. Uh, I want to, with these, I really want to try to push our realism levels. And, like, this isn't, like, cutting it so much. It's because it looks like Jared Leto Joker or something. Uh, but that's why I'm kind of, like, taking this normal kind of blue, but I'm desaturating it by going to the left side. And that's making more of, like, that natural kind of suit color. Almost it. Yeah, does that make sense? Okay. And, again, you can always change that color by double-clicking on it. And, you know, what if I want to make this more of a kind of a green thing? I'll just kind of make it subtle where it's more of, like, a winter green or whatever. I'm going to see what color does this too. I actually think color works better as the filter for it. So I'm going to bring it back to there. Okay, suit. Uh, we can fix some things up with a suit too. Like whenever I cut that part out, it also makes a mask of it. And you can see like that's the kind of suit part. I can go in on that mask and fix things up. So that's going over a little. So I'm going to take my paintbrush. I'm going to maybe increase the hardness a little bit, decrease the size, and then I'm going to just paint that part out. There we go. I'm going to swap it to white. I'm going to paint that little part back in. And then we're back to normal. Now with his face, I'm going to take my quick selection tool again. Uh, here's where some of you may get mixed up. Because if I start like selecting things on here, uh, I'm on the wrong layer to select him. So I need to be on my layer one copy. And now I can kind of make my selection and it works okay. So I'm gonna include his neck, his ears, all that stuff. I'm gonna just put in a base skin tone and a good base skin tone for anything is always kind of like more orangey, maybe more in the yellow zone. But with anything, we can always kind of affect it. Uh, I'm going to kind of have it blend into his hair a little because we'll work with that too. We just want to avoid that thing where we have like a hard wig that happens and... I don't want that. And then if we ever need to mix anything up, I can always adjust the mask later, like we did with the coat. So the same thing that we did with the coat, I'm going to go to Adjustment Layers and go to Solid Color. And once I click on Solid Color, it's going to give me a choice of what I want to color it. Uh... I've already got kind of a skinnish tone now. I can I might just make it this for now and then I'll adjust it after I change the layer property. So I'm gonna press OK. And then I'm gonna go up here where it says normal and look through here. So overlay is working pretty well. Color, it's working pretty well. I'm just going to go to color. I'm going to double click that color so it doesn't, I can adjust it some more. Just want a good base skin tone. It feels a little bit too yellowy. But I want to avoid making it like the Peter Jackson pig skin. Okay. This feels like it's a little too saturated, but it feels like it could be in a good place. Uh, another thing that we haven't done yet is adjust like our layer opacity. And every layer has like an opacity kind of that we can mess with. With this, I'm going to take the opacity from 100. I'm going to crank it down like maybe... Like, this looks pretty good because it's, like, not too harsh, but it's, like, not uh, too subtle either. But it's uh, good to work with. 
Now I want to get rid of like uh, he looks like he kind of has jaundice or something. So I want to get in there and like get rid of like those parts of his eyes on the mask. So I'm going to click on my mask of where that face is there. Again, you can click in between those two. I'm going to make sure I'm on the mask. I'm going to zoom in using my little magnifying glass. Take my brush. I'm going to switch it to black because I want to like black out where his eyes are. Maybe make my hardness a little lower. And I'm even going to take my opacity of my brush a little bit lower so I can gently kind of pull that out. Because if I, I do want to keep a little bit of his skin tone inside of his eyeballs, actually. Because uh, your eyes are so close to your face that the light bounces off of them and gets into your eyeballs. Like, uh, I don't know if you've all been in a painting class where someone's like painting their eyes and they take pure white and then they just like get in there. It's like, no, your eyes are like gray or kind of, you know fleshy looking even so I'm just knocking those back a little bit and really it's just showing that black and white photo behind it and uh, since the color we chose is orange it's doing this weird kind of color thing where it's making that black and white photo have like an optical blue tint to it so we'll kind of we'll color that in later too with more blue I think one last thing I might do with his uh, thing here is I'm going to take my hardness down. I'm going to blur the edges of his uh, hairline. I just want to get rid of like a, that hard, hard edge so it can kind of softly transition because I'll color his hair here in a second. Okay. I'm going to go to back to my quick selection tool. I'm going to click on my uh, copy layer. Okay, select that. And then I'm going to hold Alt to get rid of some of that selection that I made. Okay. And with his hair, same thing as I did before. I've got my selection. So I'm going to go to my adjustment layers, solid color. I might make this a little bit more of like a, a blondish kind of thing. Switch from normal to one of these. I've been using color. Uh, this feels way too saturated. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to bring it down this way. Just then any of the color pickers, like, uh, goes from most saturated over here to desaturated to the left-hand side. Okay. And then I have some weird kind of mask things. I'll go in there and fix it up might bring my opacity up a little bit higher. I'm just using my mouse right now too, so it's not like I'm using any special kind of things. Since I have my opacity at 45%, I'm kind of like clicking a lot. You might even hear my mouse like kind of incessantly uh, going, but there we go. There was a little bit of a halo around his ear there. So I'm going to go in on that other layer and fix that. Then I'm going to bring the white back in. I'm going to pop that part back out. Okay. So we're at a point where we have like a base skin tone, hair. Uh, what we're really missing is like kind of the thing that makes him look alive. And that's like getting some kind of redness in his cheeks and nose and lips, maybe even around his eyes. I want to try to get a little bit more of a green tone where uh, his like this bottom part of his face is too. 
uh, especially like on men, if you look at their faces, it's kind of more green near the bottom. That's just where your kind of whiskers are hidden. Uh, it's just good to like notice that kind of stuff. What we're going to do here is a little bit different than what we've done in these past three color, uh, these past three color pieces we've made. We're going to make just a brand new layer, and I'm going to call this like my makeup layer. I'm going to color it in just like someone would do makeup, basically. So I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to call this like my makeup layer. And I'm going to change this from normal to color. And then I'm going to like start painting in some of that redness. So I'm just going to pick like a kind of a red like that. I'm going to bring the opacity way low, like maybe 5%. And then I'm going to just kind of softly pull those reds out. See how it's kind of doing it already? Okay. Kind of getting it, hitting his nose a little bit. Uh, ears are kind of a big, big thing. Like ears get so red if you've got like a light behind them, you can kind of see through it. So they're pretty transparent or translucent, I should say. Okay, so I'm coloring that in. I'm right clicking to get to my tool menu a little bit faster because I want to increase the size. Okay, let's get the lips. I'm making the size of that smaller. The lips is kind of where you can really kind of see it happen because it has more contrast against that kind of greenness of the beard. Okay, so that's just our makeup layer. If I hide and unhide it, you see the difference between that? It's like pretty significant. Uh, on that same makeup layer, I think I'm going to change my color. I'll swap it to a blue. I'm going to color in his eyes, too. Okay. <laughs> there we go. I think I might stop here in a second. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to hit those with a little bit. You can see the difference between left and right. I don't want to make it too crazy like, you know, it's Dune or something. But Okay. Uh, his eyes might be a little bit, like, too vibrant. Uh, I don't know. General rule of thumb is, like, kind of less is more. Uh like I was saying with like that making a suit like pure pink doesn't look good. So uh, I want to try to tone this back. So I'm going to make a mask layer on my makeup layer. I'm going to have my opacity low. I'm just going to knock that back a little bit. And it might not even be that perceptive, like might not be able to perceive it very well, but uh like, I can see the difference in it already, and it makes me feel a little better about it. Because they were, the eyes are almost working pretty well just in that black and white kind of uh, mode. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do something else on this makeup layer that's more of like a color theory type thing. And... I'm going to take a green. Does anyone in this class have like really blonde hair where they use like that purple shampoo? No? I wasn't really aware of it, but <laughs> until even recently, but, uh, you know, people with really, really blonde hair will use purple shampoo because they're uh, complementary colors and they'll cancel each other out. So by using the purple shampoo, it'll make your hair less yellow looking. 
because uh, you want it to be lighter and less uh, saturated. But what we're going to do with this green, I'm going to like hit some of these red spots, and it's going to cancel each other out a little bit. And I might even add a little bit of that kind of greenness to his, that bottom part of his face. Maybe not a lot, though. I'm going to swap back to my red. And the red I'm choosing is, I'm mainly kind of picking this area. Uh, there's no real rule of, like, where on the red spectrum you want to go. It just depends on, like, what opacity your layer is at and uh, kind of what look you're going for. But for the most part, I'm kind of sticking in this area. Okay. I'm going to pop some of this red back in because I'm trying to get a kind of a complex layer of skin tones. Okay. I'm going to get a little bit more of this green. I want to hit his neck a little bit with that. Okay. So whenever I back up, I can see where it maybe get a, gets a little too red there. Go back in here. Might bring it just a little bit back. Maybe in the corner of eyes there. Okay, so next thing that I want to do, uh, you know, maybe just to kind of show you what this makeup layer looks like, I'll hide everything. Like, <laughs> that's basically just like all we've done right there is uh, just that little bit. You can see the little blue of his eyes. So it's kind of goofy looking, but uh, that's how it looks. Uh, I want to do a shirt really quick, and then we'll uh, I'll talk a little bit about this next exercise, and we'll call it a day. So I'm back on this copy layer. I'm going to highlight a shirt. Going to not include his tie. And this is something that I did with the last section, where uh, like my intuition told me that. Like, even though this shirt's white, I want to give it a little bit of, like, uh, color from the light situation that it's in. And, uh, I don't know, my intuition told me that I should make the shirt kind of bluish tinted because it is right next to the suit. The light from the suit might be bouncing off of that, hitting the shirt. So, I'm going to make a solid color layer. And then I'll kind of make that blue again. But I'll show you kind of what happened with it where uh, whenever I make it more of a natural color like that, for instance, it's like kind of too blue. If I hide this layer, it looks better. You see what I mean? Like there's there it is without the blue. Here it is with the blue. Like, what do you think about not having the blue there? Like, why do you think that works better? It's a white shirt. It's a white shirt. It's There's something else to it, though. Uh, it's his face. Like, uh, since his face is so orange and kind of light, uh, you know, the light would be hitting your face and even kind of bouncing off onto your clothing. So making his shirt kind of warmer, like I might turn it more something like that. Even though it is a white shirt, I'm going to just crank it down this way a little bit more, but I'm going to give it just that little bit of color because now it looks a little bit more natural where his skin tone is bouncing on like that shirt. Uh, I know that sounds silly, but like, uh, I don't know if I was explaining it to this class or the one before, but 
Uh, if you paint outside a lot, uh, even the clothes that you wear matter. Uh, so let's say I wear a red shirt, I'm painting a landscape. My red shirt, the light's going to bounce off of that and hit my canvas, and that causes a lot of problems. Uh, same thing with like colorizing any of these images. You want to think about the situation that it's in, and that's why that kind of looks better like that. But uh, anyway, that's kind of, this is like five different layers that we've done, and it's already kind of like getting there. Uh, I know they were saying, like, some of these layers have, like, 20 different skin tones. Uh, I think you could probably do it in much, much less than that. Uh, we did this in, like, kind of two layers of skin tones, and it's looking okay. But, uh, obviously, you could keep adding more to it and kind of playing around with uh, how far you can push it. But this is kind of just the general idea, though. I want to keep it kind of simple. But does anyone have questions with any of the stuff that we've gone over so far? Okay. Uh, so just really quick, brief recap. Uh, new things that we've done basically are just uh, adding a new adjustment layer with a solid color. We're also changing like our layer uh, property here from normal to uh, something else. Color is what we've been working on all day. And the other thing that we've worked on is the opacity. And uh, even cranking this blue opacity down of his suit, I kind of like that better looking than where it was before. Like there, it's a little bit more saturated there. Cranking that down to 70% kind of looks a little bit more naturalistic to me. But uh, what I want you to do is uh, either pick a family photo that you want to kind of repair and work on, or pick one from this list. Uh, any of these are fine. And uh, I want you to make a the colorized version of it, but I want to have like... Uh, the black and white on one side and color on the other side like uh, this person did here. So I'm just going to show you really quick how we can uh, do that with what we have here. Uh, one of the things that I think maybe some of you ran into while you're working on your hybrids where you had to like increase the size of your image you can do it a few different ways. Uh, we could go to our crop tool and expand this out further. And uh, it would give us enough room to like stick our other image in there. Uh, you could also go to image and canvas size. And here it's helpful. Like, okay, so the width is that. I'll just make this 8.8. .8. That'll double the width. Now I'm going to take my move tool because I need to move this over. I can highlight every one of these layers I want to move by holding down the control button and clicking on each of these. I want to move like all of those because they're kind of working off each other. Or I can hold down the shift button and click on that bottom layer here and it'll grab all of those in between. I'm going to take my move tool. I'm going to just slide this over. Okay, so let's say I, I get to this spot. I can make small incremental changes by using my arrow keys. So I'm just using my arrow key right to move it closer to the edge. Okay, there's, it's perfect. Now what I'm going to do is take this original I'm going to unlock it, and then I'm going to grab it and move this over here. Okay. Now I've got this edge over here, and that's what I'm going to use the crop tool for. Uh, if I'm cropping this off, it looks like it got it right on the edge there, which is perfect what I wanted. 
Sometimes it doesn't do it perfectly like that, and it helps just being zoomed in. So I'm going to move this over. So the more you're zoomed in, the smaller changes you can make to your crop. And since that's only a few pixels, I'm just going to bring it in there. And with the crop tool, I can either double click on this and it'll accept the changes or I can hit the check mark. And now I've got like my side by side picture. You go file, save as. Zach. Okay, so there's my PSD. And then I'll save my JPEG version. Okay, and then uh, I'm set. Like, I would still probably want to mess around with the tie and stuff like that, the background as well. But in general, that's the uh, what I'll have you do. Any questions with that? Okay, uh, so I want to give you a little bit of time to work on it. So uh, we will not meet on Monday. We will uh, meet on Wednesday, and I'll have a folder where uh, you can turn in your black and white coloring. But uh, again, I would encourage you to uh, seek out some family photos if you have them and work on those. Uh, some of those have kind of bigger challenges to them, so if you have any trouble, uh, I'm available. That's what I'm here for. Send me an email, and we'll take a look at it together, uh, set up a meeting whenever. Uh, we'll figure it out, but uh, I'll send out an email later with more specifics and guidelines and stuff like that. And, so if you uh, have black and white, you just have to scan them in if you actually have the picture itself. Yeah, you can scan them in if they're not scanned already, and that should be good. Uh, the higher quality scan that you can get, the better. Uh, so was there anything else to that? Okay, uh, and I guess lastly, I'm going to be working on uh, just working on attendance and grades and stuff like that uh, this weekend, so keep your eyes peeled. Make sure that you've got everything in those folders that uh, we did for like your uh, removing the human presence and then also your hybrids. All right, if there's no other questions, I'll see you on Wednesday. Uh, just keep your eyes peeled for an email, and uh, I'll see you then. See you, Professor. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Yep.